my father used to say, oh, man should be strong, man doesn't cry. Then I saw my, my father cry when Brazil lost the game. Then I told him, father, no, don't worry, I'm going to win one World Cup for you, don't worry. I was nine years, nine to ten years old. I fight in college with the, the kids because now my name is Edson, they call me Pelé. I got two days suspended in the school. Then everybody in school, all the kids start to call me Pelé. I hate that time. <laughs> <laughs> Today I love, of course. <laughs> now I love because, uh, I don't know, God gave to me short name, easy to pronounce it, any language you can remember, Pelé. Because uh, my name is Edson Arantes do Nascimento. It's from 1958 onwards, Pelé and Santos were in demand all over the world. Everyone wanted a ticket to the greatest show in town. And Santos's number 10 received the sort of adulation normally reserved for pop stars. My father always said, whatever happens in the future, and whatever people will tell you in the future, Pelé is the best player in the world. <laughs> so, um, yeah. The first thing when I think about Brazilian football is Pelé. Pelé is incomparable and unbeatable in every way. He pulled us to pieces. There's no doubt about that. We didn't get near him. Quite frankly, um, if the game had gone another 10 minutes, they'd have scored another three goals, I feel. For me, Pelé is number one. We've all done our own lists. Maradona, Siafino, Zico, Pelé. He, he was the player who impressed me the most even though I only saw him in many videos. I saw him play on television, and I think he had no flaws. He was physically perfect, extraordinarily skillful, good at headers, good with his right foot, with his left, totally unpredictable, intelligent. He always was and always will be. For me, he'll always be number one. He was kind of Michael Owen, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Diego Maradona, Johan Cruyff, all the, all the great footballers you can think of. Now among his qualities, Pelé had this ability to jump 40 centimetres. Now he could jump 40 centimetres off the ground, and uh, our players can tell you something about that. He also had uh, agility, speed, intuition, sharp turns. Now these show great physical strength. The changes of direction, ball control that these players could do, coupled with this strength, I'd put it all together. I could see no imperfections in Pele. He was the most complete number 10. He could use his right foot, his left foot, he could dribble, he could stop the ball with the side of his foot, with the outside of his foot, back heels, headers, he had everything. He was absolutely complete. And he scored lots of goals. He set up plays, he was athletic, quick and explosive. Knowing that I was going to come to Brazil for some time, the person I really wanted to meet the most here was uh, Pelé, and uh, I'm going to get it now, so I'm very, very excited. <laughs> Yeah, that was a very big moment for me in my life uh, to meet Pele uh, at his apartment here in Brazil. It's, I don't know, it's almost surreal, you know, that I have this opportunity to meet this 
amazing personalities, um, champions, legend really. Uh, so I really appreciate that he gave me the time to have an opportunity to meet him. De, y se queda discutiendo con esa malecha en tanto que Pelé inicia una de sus clásicas jugadas entrándose, pero no lo han dejado de... entregándole a Pelé el brujo haciendo jugada, pero le han interceptado y entró con la fuerza de una locomotora. No hay quien lo pare y el disparo.
Eh, lo que pasa es que me va a pasar a mí dentro de 10 de años con, por ahí con, con, con Leonel, eh, que ya los chicos ya no me conocen a mí y a Leonel sí porque es, es, eh, es el jugador del, sí, del sí, momento. Sí, el, el que están viendo. Claro. claro, como me pasó en Qatar a mí con Pelé, eh, que venía Pelé, el jeque y yo. Uh -huh. Y los chicos, ¿a quién van a conocer? Diego, Diego, me firmás, Diego, Diego, me firmás. Porque y el morocho del otro lado. Uh, como loco. No, nah, como. Last year when Danny Alves was going to take a corner kick, somebody threw a banana at the pitch. He peeled the banana, ate it and took the corner. Nobody talked about it again. It was an act of racism. I think if Danny had taken the banana and had thrown it back into the stands, we would still be talking about it today. I think that Aranha precipitated himself a little bit by wanting to fight the supporters. If I had to stop or shout every time since I started to play in Latin America, here in Brazil, in its interior, every time I was racially abused, every game would have to be stopped.